do have a lot of uh, restaurateurs who are their their chefs are thinking of different recipes of how can we make, make this because the the texture actually comes out a lot better because when it comes to wheat products the protein high protein means high gluten structure that means that you get a delicious quality um, so we're actually seeing quality increases as well as the the net new weight of the product comes out and. I mean, we have a lot of local restaurateurs here in Toronto and as well as in Sydney that are very excited about the the prospect of doing this in their restaurants, as well as that we're, we're now talking to the grocers and mainstream market chains to see how can we how can we market this in a way that's a very easily to be receptive to and also very convenient to the customer, right? Um, for us, it's really about creating a delicious product that is healthy and as well as it is convenient for the consumer, right? So the team's working hard on that. We may not have the answers for everything yet, but this is the, what I believe is going to be in the future of food as we try to be a little bit more sustainable in our supply chain and, and, and do good in the world. Hello, Future Foodcast audience. We're so glad you joined us today. I'm Pam Line Miller, your host for this episode with a really exciting guest. His name is Kerry Tam. He's doing some very innovative things in the food space. And I'm really looking forward to hearing from him about what's going on. Welcome to our podcast, Kerry. Thank you, Pam. I appreciate the, uh, the quick introduction. I'm very, very excited to be part of this podcast. Yeah, and we're glad to have you. And I think after we get finished talking, our audience is going to be really glad that they listened in. You have a lot of things going on in your world right now. Tell us a little bit about what your current project is. Yeah, so we have a lot of amazing projects going on right now. Um, so a little bit about a brief about the business and what we're doing is, so I am the president of Kwok Chung Noodles, which is going to be rebranded very soon to Mian Noodle, Mian meaning noodle in Mandarin. Um, so we are doing a massive rebranding. We are pushing the business, what was what has been a traditional business, into the, the future of food, I would say. Um, doing a lot of very innovative stuff when it comes to noodles. Um, and then as well as we have our brand Flour and Dough, which is more focused on the grocery experiential stuff that is really boots on the ground in grocery stores, providing an experience, because that's also what we believe is going to be in the future of food, is building an experience and getting the consumer to have the freshest food possible made right in front of them. Okay, there's several themes there that our audience is really interested in. <laughs> well, first of all, Mian Mian is at M I E N. For those of us who don't speak Mandarin, just to spell that so we can go yeah. look it up. For when oh, you... of course. Okay. I just like to make everything clear. I know that'll be in our- It's M-I-A-N. M-I-A-N. See, that's yes. why I have to ask <laughs> how you question. spell that. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, now, the, the current company that you're rebranding, though, before you even get into the rebranding and all that's going on with your future, you've had quite a good track record with that company, correct? But where have you been so far? So I first started off as being the director of operations and also amalgamating that role into being sales. I was in charge of more of the Canadian North American side of the business in the beginning. So a little bit of a backstory is the business started in 1960s in the Hong Kong and uh, since then expanded into China and Guangzhou and then as well to Sydney, Australia. And then finally in 2001, they moved here into Toronto, Canada. So I was director of operations for two years. I took a little bit of a hiatus to go work for um, Staples, Staples Canada. Um, so that was very fun for me as well. And then right around two years ago, I think that I made the decision to purchase the company upright and, and all of its assets. So ever since I purchased the company two years ago, um, I've been operating as the, the owner and president of the business across all the different, what was called Chung or KC Noodles, um, which we're rebranding to Mian Noodle. And with that, it's going to come a lot of very innovative products and projects that we're working on. So uh, I'm very excited about that. And so is the team. Yes, that is exciting. Can you give us a little bit more detail in what you mean? Our audience might be familiar, but that term upstream and upcycling and some of the terminology you're using, what does that mean for us? What are the implications of what you're working on? Yeah, for sure. Upcycle is, uh, or upstream food is a term that we're using really to define using net new or building net new food into the supply chain um, using what would be considered as waste products 
from other food manufacturing that would be that's still very edible. It's delicious. It's healthy, um, and re-putting that into or repurposing it into the the supply chain. For example, here would be something like to make panko in um, for the Japanese crusting is that you have to they bake the bread and they cut off the crust. And what is remaining is being used for panko. However, the crust is then recycled, repurposed because it's still delicious bread. It's still very nutritious. Um, and then we can make that into a new food. That's a great example. I love panko bread from Spy and Play. <laughs> that's one of my favorite things to put on oh, it's amazing. chicken or fish or any of that. And that's a great example because you're you're talking about not extra like used food it is new food so the crust on the bread is just unused by that current production that it's needed for with the panko breadcrumbs so you can use the crust for other things like what would you what would you do with the crust of the bread i mean yeah, there's sure. other food products the the crust of it it could be broken down into other things as well right um, we can use technology to Either we can dry age it out so that it becomes something a little bit more solidified, re-break it down into the flour compound structures, and then repurpose that into the noodle stream. Or that, that's just one example of using the panko, right? But there's other stuff like that that's out there in terms of even, for example, vegetation. The unused portions or the what would be considered as the, the, the runoff of the main products. The, the roots, the crust of certain other products in terms of vegetation can be also used because they're high in fiber, high in protein, and they're actually very good on calories, right? So inputting that into our noodling process would also allow us to have a little a more nutritious noodle. It may not seem as exciting or as sexy as it might sound to use the the crusts or the, the the rejections of certain things, but it can be definitely be used back into the food cycle. But that is really helping us to maximize our food sources, which is an issue these days. And that one that our audience is concerned about, you know, we want sustainability when our food products, we want to be able to maximize our use of the resources that we have. And I hear you saying this process and, and really investigating options for all different food products to utilize vegetation sources, as well as the case of the bread. I mean, it's a, it's in a form that's created by us, but some of the plant products, for example, we're not using all of the pieces of the plant in the particular production that it might be primary for, but that doesn't mean we need to throw away the whole rest of the plant. There's a lot of nutrition there. And I just really like this whole concept. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad we're excited about it. Being received. Yeah. How is it being received out there in the market? I think it's actually going really well. Uh, we do have a lot of uh, restaurateurs who are, their, their chefs are thinking of different recipes of how can we make, make this because the, the texture actually comes out a lot better because when it comes to wheat products, the protein, high protein means high gluten structure. That means that you get a delicious quality. Um, so we're actually seeing quality increases as well as the the net new weight of the product comes out. And I mean, we have a lot of local restaurateurs here in Toronto and as well as in Sydney that are very excited about the the prospect of doing this in their restaurants, as well as that we're, we're now talking to the grocers and mainstream market chains to see how can we how can we market this in a way that's a very easily to be receptive to and also very convenient to the customer, right? Um, for us, it's really about creating a delicious product um, that is healthy and as well as it is convenient for the consumer, right? Um, so the team's working hard on that. We may not have the answers for everything yet, but this is the, what I believe is going to be in the future of food as we try to uh, be a little bit more sustainable in our supply chain and, and and do good in the world. I know. I love that you're using the terminology future food. I'm sure you did that on purpose. <laughs> future food cast. Yeah. We really are happy to have you as a guest. I, I know that you're focused on, you were explaining about some of the profitable, you know, restaurant, I mean, where you're going to be reselling this from, you know, you're the manufacturer and reselling to people that can use that and, and getting the whole idea out. But you also have a little bit of a fill in anthropic soul there and focused on, you know, some of the hunger issues that are going on in our 
communities across the world. Is there anything else you'd like to say about that and how this might impact? Yeah, for sure. I think that uh, the goal here is to provide a healthy food source for everyone. I think both of us, everyone or that's probably the audience that is listening is probably going through the education system or has been. And I mean, between you and I, I, I simply don't think that the lunchroom lunches that were that the school systems are getting across the world are that healthy, nor is it very delicious. So we're looking into ways of, because we have the supply chain and we have the capabilities to, how can we provide students with healthy, affordable and delicious lunches? Um, Because I think that we definitely can do it. Uh, It just comes down to talking to the right people and how can we get this going? So if there's anyone in the audience that's listening and wants to, if they feel the same way and they can somehow Uh, connect with us, then let's make this happen. Yes. Great call out. We'd be happy for our audience to partner with you on some of those items because that's really important focus for, for us to have today. Let's turn back to what you initially talked about in your introduction with getting some of the noodles into the grocery stores and, and the process there. What, what's happening on that front as far as the grocery situation with that? Noodles. Yeah, for sure. Um, noodles, I think, have been stuck in a very traditional space. Um, you you have your you have your dry pastas, you have your fresh noodles, um, but really making that whole thing into an experience is where flour and dough comes into our with our business is creating noodles and other flour products right on the spot in front of the consumer per portion per gram. That way, we don't have to purchase more and have it keep in stock in our homes that you can just buy whatever you need for dinner, whatever you're planning for, for the week. Uh, It's really built for having the consumer and having the customer really see what, what it takes to, to make it. And as well as being in the grocery stores, making it fresh means no preservative. Um, We don't have to do anything in terms of making this prolonged shelf life and packaging. So we're saving a lot from the environment and as well as the consumer's health with that. Freshest quality, like your noodles and pastas are made three hours before you cooked it. All right. Explain this. I need you to unpack that a little bit for me. But what I heard you say was that. If, I, if I'm deciding maybe I want to have some kind of noodle dish for dinner, I can go to the grocery store and actually order the amount that I need. And it's going to be processed. Is it while I'm waiting there? Like what, how is that going to take shape? Like I, as a consumer going to a grocery store and actually get, I love the idea of fresh noodles made to order, no preservatives, which our audience is all about getting all those extra things out of our food. We want to stay as whole as possible and how I would do that. What's the process step-by-step for me as a consumer? Yeah, for sure. So Right now, um, flour and dough, we are in multiple conversations with a lot of different um, grocers, grocery chains um, in, in Canada right now. And some of them are we're really close and it's just a matter of dotting the I's and crossing the T's. Um, we already have the flagship store as a test site right now in the middle of Toronto, which is that we make fresh pastas and other noodles right on the spot, similar to how you would see sometimes a bakery inside of a grocery store that they bake the bread fresh in the morning. For for us, we're making noodles and other flour products. It doesn't necessarily have to be bread, right? It could be cupcakes. It could be, it could be, it doesn't have to be a bakery, but we are making fresh on the spot uh, and and consumers can see it. We're just doing flour, water, salt. It's very simple, but it, it, yet it's delicious. Okay. Would I order that ahead or do I do it when I get to the store? Right now we're, t- we're in our first test schedules. We're doing at the store. Um, we're looking into how we can implement technologies into it. Um, you know, Uber is an amazing one, which we can always set that up. It, it comes to more of a logistics issue because of the drivers having to then go inside the grocery store, take it back out, stuff like that. However, um, we're looking into how we can implement technology like POS systems and making, there's so many companies out there that we're talking to right now. How can we get the consumers to plan ahead as well, right? Ordering groceries online has become more and more trendy and as well as it's, it's here to stay. So how can we also do it? I think that we have uh, across the world have gotten better and better, especially here in North America, between the United States and Canada with the pandemic gotten, had to be utilizing best practices and figuring out how to do that order and delivery and 
And that's, I'm surprised, honestly, Carrie, to hear that I could just go to the grocery store and say, this is what I need and, and have it right there. I was thinking I'd have to order the day ahead or a couple of days to give some notice, but that's, that's a really positive from me, you know, as a consumer to be able to say, I, I want to go today and I want to walk out of the store with my fresh product that's actually been made right there at the store that day. And I really, I really like that idea. I think that that will catch on with a lot of people. Obviously you have a flagship you know, inaugural store happening with others in the works, which I'm sure top secret. If you tell me you have, you, that wouldn't be good. So <laughs> that's okay. Well, I'm excited for the future of what that might be for you. Now there's a lot of uh, interest in technology as well. And I think you're very involved in technology. Can you tell us a little bit about what part technology plays in what you're doing? Yeah, for sure. So I think you touched on a really key component there is that consumers as well as us in the food industry we're we want things almost immediately and i think that's where food is 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 really catching up in terms of its timing is throughout the entire supply chain how can we get things because you can you can order i don't know a keyboard let's just say for example from amazon and quality of it really doesn't matter if it comes today or however for food I think the notion is that it's the best just prepared. So the time it was prepared and ready to eat to when we get it, I think the, the technology that we're using right now to manage our warehousing, to manage our production, making things just in time for, for delivery is what we specialize in. So with that being said, is our technology that we're using right now in our warehouses and in our manufacturing is that by the time the consumer has it, it's probably only been maybe about three days um, since it's been prepared, which is something that we couldn't have done without the technology that we have today. Okay. I think that's really important because especially with some of the supply chain issues we're having in the food space, it, are you having any trouble getting your ingredients where you can have them on hand so that you can then get them from the warehouse to the consumer in that three to four day time frame that you were just talking about? I'm yeah. So the, the the supply chain right now has been has been a very big struggle. I think for everyone in the industry, I'm very thankful that. Uh, two years ago that, that I've not, not to toot my own horn, but we, we made the decision to collectively as a team to make sure that all of our facilities across the world used localized supplies, uh, because as much as the world has globalized right now, borders are tough. So we haven't been affected too much in terms of the the supply of what we're using, but more so just in terms of price, which we're happy to we're happy to make sure that we still have the right quality of it. And for the time being, we're still doing okay in terms of making sure that we have all the supplies that we need because we've localized. However, there are certain ingredients out there that may, would make our consistency a little bit more day by day. We're, we're a little bit more nimble right now in terms of the different products that we use. So that, that's been a challenge for sure, but I think that everyone's feeling it. So really making sure that we purchase local and make sure that we focus on the future is what's really important for us. Yeah, I think there's a lot of focus on global as we've gone. Like you said, I mean, everything is kind of getting globalized. It sounds like you're really decentralizing some things so that you're not making um, a worldwide decision. You know, wherever your local need is, you're trying to source from there. And that has allowed you to continue to have a more consistent supply chain than maybe some others. A good summary of what you just said. <laughs> yes, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we, we were really making sure that every single component of our of manufacturing and our supply chain is sustainable. And that, that doesn't just mean that we're, we're, we're making, think, making sure that things are green, but more so in terms of can every single facility and every single zone that we're in sustain itself. Okay. That's interesting too. So yeah, I like the self-sustaining part too. Uh, let's talk about some of the food products. So you have noodles now, do you have plans to expand or do you have any like next product that's uh, right on the forefront that you're thinking about? Yeah, we do. So we, the team right now is working on it. it. It's it's. I'm very excited for it. It might not just be noodles, but it is kind of right now the, the industry has kind of just been noodles is an essential, right? It is the, the carb base of someone's meal. So we're looking at how can we add to that, right? Um, high protein, low carbs, 
Um, we're, we're infusing it with a lot of different sort of healthy products. Spinach is one of them, tomato is another one of them. Um, so we're, we're looking at how can we make, take noodles to that next level, as well as that is taking that and making it convenient for the consumer. We have a lot of products that are right now in research and development. Um, nothing yet that I can share in terms of like, it's not a fully flash pro- uh, product, but we're getting there. Okay. And are you utilizing some of the concepts with the upcycling uh, to be able to add to those products? You were saying it's not that exciting, but we, we all want more nutrition and we, we all want the feel of our products to be substantial, you know, with the fiber and that might be part of some of the vegetation extra that's not used in core. Are, are you incorporating those things in some of your new products? I'm assuming you are. Definitely. Definitely. We are. Um, that, that is something that is a very core component in terms of what we're looking for in the future, because it, it helps with everyone in, in the supply chain, because we never want to see food go to waste. Right. So um, we're talking with a lot of the business partners that we have in terms of how can we how can we get this product from one place that would have went to waste to our facilities and how can we make use of everything properly? Right. Okay. Uh, what other things would you like to share with our audience about what's going on with your companies and your products and all the interesting things that you have coming? Uh, I, I like several of the concepts that you mentioned today, which we'll summarize kind of at the end, but what other thoughts do you have that you think our audience might be interested in knowing about? Um, yeah, I think for, for the audience, um, be prepared for some exciting things when it comes to food. I think in the last 50 years, we've seen an immense amount of growth in terms of just the taste buds. I mean, the modern food is, is just so much more delicious, I think, in my mind, that we are becoming a lot more particular, as well as we're trying to make sure that food is convenient, convenient and nutritious for everyone. And that's something that uh, everyone would, would want to strive towards is to have quick, convenient, delicious meals. Um, and making sure that they're nutritious, right? Um, that's something that we're really striving towards. And I think that it's not just us. I, I see, and I'm very happy for a lot of other food companies going towards that trend of how can we provide the best value for our customers? Because it's definitely possible. The audience just stay, hang in there. We're, we're going to be there very soon. Gary, thank you so much for your optimistic outlook. And I think the audience is going to be just paying attention to what's going on with M-I-A-N, M-I-A-N. Uh, you got noodles, it. Noodles, is that the name? Yen noodles. Thank you. <laughs> just one or two? <laughs> you have two mians in there or just one? <laughs> We're gonna just put- one, just Okay, men noodles. We're going to put that in the show notes for sure. And they can follow you because really what you're doing with your localizing your supply chain, which is which is kind of novel. Honestly, a lot of people are looking to source their products from wherever they can and the, and the cheapest supplier and all that. You're still looking at supporting those local communities right where the end product is going to be needed so that that is really helping that local ecosystem of food supply and demand support itself. I really like that idea. I think our client, our uh, audience will as well. And also about upcycling. I hadn't really heard about that in those terms before and, and utilizing all of the food sources that are available to us, not just the primo piece that's for one process, but being able to use all parts of the food and and even food that we create, uh, like you talked about the bread for panko, that we aren't using the crust in that process, but it can be used for other things. I just... Any last words you'd like to say other than your stay tuned, because that was very exciting. I think just enjoy everyone. Enjoy what's to come. I think that uh, it's going to be amazing. It's just going to be amazing. I I can't hold my excitement that much. Just enjoy. Just enjoy yes. what's to come. Well, thanks again for your great positive outlook and your energetic food interest, because I think that's just going to, the innovation is obviously coming because you're excited and you're investigating different opportunities. And we're so glad you came on the Future Foodcast podcast. Thanks so much, Gary. Thank you, Pam. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for listening to Future Foodcast. Future Foodcast is powered by Farm to Plate, the leading food blockchain platform. Subscribe on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts to stay up to date with the very latest innovations in the food industry. 